where would that rank in all the kind of crazy games you would have seen over your time, given the start and the finish? Yeah, um, I, I don't think I've seen one that that weird. Really, I haven't. Um, so right up there, right up there, you know, right up there with 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 uh, the weirdness of of the whole game. Um, I don't really know what to say as far as the offense goes, and not being able to put the ball in and not not look uh, close a lot doing it on on some shots. But I do know what to say about the defense. The defense kept on plugging and plugging and plugging, um, you know, all the way. Like I, it, you guys probably thinking the same thing that how how were we anywhere within shouting distance um, for the first three quarters of that game? With the shooting percentages, so um, they really they really did a good job fighting on defense. What's, what's it say about them that they can have that effort defensively in light of? Well, it, it it says like you know I think everybody's well aware we're going through a really difficult patch maybe maybe the most difficult patch we've been through, um, and they're you know like like I say to you guys they're 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 fighting and trying and they're trying to execute the the game plan and they're and they're hanging in there right I think I think that uh, the um, offensive woe is probably would have caught up with us. Um, you know, maybe a few weeks ago or a month ago, and got to our defense, but it didn't seem to tonight. So, you mentioned, the turn. Sorry, uh, you mentioned how some of the shots weren't very close, even though they were fairly decent shots. Um, is that a team that when the shots start to pile up, when the missed shots start to pile yeah, up, I mean, you start to think about them? I mean, I think I think so. I think that um, it, you know, it's a lot like a lot of things. I think it gets a little contagious, right? Like you know, we we had some you know again. Uh, and it just kind of started spreading, you know, and we're trying try to, you know, sneak a few other guys in there and, and maybe, you know, see if they'd relax and, and vault up and knock one down, and that didn't seem to help much either. So it just one of those things that spread. And, and um, you know, just like uh, the start of the overtime was a great synopsis of the game. We get three stops and two wide-open threes and one wide-open, um, you know, like eight – 12 footer and and we got nothing to show for it you know and then we're and we're down and we fall down two um you know after about three minutes of play right so so that was really a synopsis of the game and and i kind of thought we maybe kind of broke the dam open there you know uh certainly had with just just kind of pace and kick and taking shots and having some having some success with some things what do you make of the scotty sort of Quiet until he comes yeah. on late. A, a yeah, lot. Well, you know, was we, an we, yeah. Of that. It was. Like, that was well. We 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 need him. We need him to be uh, again more aggressive from from start to finish. Is that? I mean, how much does playing a guy like Lopez, where you really have to consider the push and pull of when do I force a shot, when do I not play into his role in particular tonight? Well, I think that. Um, the thing about it is he ended up having some success right on him at the front of the rim, right? And I think I would probably, we probably looking back on it now, we'd explore that early to just say, okay, let's go, let's go try to get into him and, and challenge him. Or, you know, probably take few, a few more of the wide, wide open threes that he was given. Like, you know, we're not, we're not telling him not to shoot those for sure, right? I mean, we don't want 20 of them, but, but, Got to got to try to keep them a little bit on us, so we can we can, um, you know, just not let them do exactly what he wants to do out there. The second game in a row where you get seven from the bench. As long as the, the best five scorers are, are starting, you're probably not going to get big scoring totals from some of those guys off the bench. But what do you need from them to be able to? impact the game more? Well, I think that, uh, you know, I mentioned it um, the other day, it's, it's, um, they got to be a, a lot more solid um, defensively, first of all, right, to, to not just, if they're not going to uh, score in stretches, they've got to make sure they're not just giving it away quickly, like the, like a little bit happened in Indiana the other night, right? Um, but, you know, like, um, 
you know, Malachi's had some good games where he's made some open shots. Chris has. Need, need, to, need to make a few more. You know, Precious gets back in the swing of things. I thought he had a couple of decent looks and drives and stuff that, that you know, needs to, needs to finish. He had a couple, uh, uh, at least one nice roll and lob, you know, and just, just they got to they gotta make some of those, Josh. That's it. Chris got drilled by a screen in the second Yes, half. he did. Uh, looked like it wasn't called out by his teammates. Um, is that true? Is that something you guys discussed? Well, it was a little bit of a weird play. I think uh, Chris ended up crashing the glass and and decided to stay up on Giannis, right? And I think I think that 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 kind of threw off the matchups a little bit in back. I'm not sure anybody was guarding that screener yeah. yet or way up at that point, right, to communicate it. Yeah. So no one to call it. I, I don't know. I got to look at it. Yeah. He got to get hit hard though, from you know, kind of blindsided, right? Coach, you had a, an early challenge in the first quarter. Um, did you do that intentionally in terms of like wanting to set the tone for the rest of the game, or Russ taking closer looks? Well, at I mean, I think I think you're always going to get um, um, Giannis with his share of collisions down there, and you're never quite sure, you know, what your guys are doing wrong, other than taking a punishment. Right, and that one, I didn't get a great look at it on the original one, but Pascal was, you know, uh, obviously saying it was all ball, and I got a quick look on it on the screen, and thought I had about a seventy percent chance of getting it right, right, just from the call basis, and um, also setting a little bit of an early tone that you know we actually can stop, stop him possibly. Right, we actually could, you know, strip it clean tonight. What did you think of your defense against him? A lot of points, but 12 turnovers is a career high for him. Uh, it was outstanding. It was outstanding. Yep. You mentioned Malachi earlier. I mean, he, he had some good moments over the last few weeks, but probably not so many of them here over the last couple of games. How, how tough is it with, with young players like that to kind of live through the ups and the downs? Well, I think I think that. Um, what you said is exactly right, Josh. He's, he, he had a nice stretch there, really impacted games. Um, I think that, you know, uh, it is still probably a pretty small sample size, but that's kind of, he's, he's kind of nights when he's hot and when he's not, right? And and um, he's certainly going to impact games the nights he's, he is, and he's not going to impact them very much when he's not. And that's the simple data that I can go from right now. The 16 wins, uh, 38 games. It's the fewest since the 2012-13 season. What have you seen from the past couple games that gives you hope that you and your team could turn it around for the remainder of the season? Well, I, I still say that um, we've got to um, continue to, to to play to our identity, which is playing you know playing pretty good, solid defense and giving ourselves a chance. Um, and I. I think, I mean, I haven't watched the tape yet, but I think there's a lot of makeable shots out there. We've just got to, we just got to get some over this hump of, of um, guys that career wise have, have shot the ball a lot better. Right. Uh, and I think, I think those shots are there. I think we're creating them. There's not some like major thing. I think the major thing is, is we've got to get some confidence back at that end. And I think that feeds, feeds that way. I, I, again, I have to look at it a little bit more closely, which I will. But it's simple as that, man. We got to put the ball in the bucket a little bit more. Yeah. Did you, did you ever get that close to pulling the starters and saying this one's over? Uh, no, not yet. I, I, it was still it was still too too early for me for that. Fred, with the way it started and the way that it ended, where, where does that rank in terms of some of the strangest games you've been a part of? Uh, it's at the top for sure. That was uh an experience um, but again uh, you know loss is a loss wish we could have came out with a W there that would have made up for a lot of how ugly it was but um, you know take an ugly win I'm not so sure there's a, such thing as an ugly loss yes. how do you not you collective team not lost your minds <laughs> you know what I mean like it, yeah. no fair point there's no nothing no it's fair um I think just uh, with myself and Pascal having been through a lot in a short amount of time in seven years, I think just understanding the situation that we're all in and um, 
it's one of those things where it's like not really one person's fault. You know what I mean? It's just a, uh, you know, some guys, sometimes you're a casualty of war and um, just, you know, this is very situational and, um, you know, we certainly all got to play better as a, as a unit, as a team, and you try to find ways to do that. But um, for the most part, uh, you know, it's not much finger pointing or, or blaming each other because, you know, we're all out there together in the fight together and um, just, you know, keep trying to find ways to do it and get it done. But, uh, yeah, that's probably the most I can say on that part. What's it like when you go over 15 as a team and, like, two of 29 through the first 15 minutes or something like that? Like, what are people saying? What are you, how are you trying to... Not lose your mind, I guess. Yeah, it's a lot of basketball left. You know, it's a long game. You know, it's never quit. You just got to keep pushing. And, um, you know, we're in the moment. Just like everybody else, it feels like what it looks like. You know, I'm sure watching it, you know, it's, it's worse on playing it than, than watching it. So we're out there. We're in the mix. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things, the energy and the mojo and just the, the air in the building was just weird. You know, it was just, it was just a, a weird game, especially to start off like that. And they weren't much better. You know what I mean? And it was a 12-13 at the end of one. So, uh, you know, we just kept fighting. You know, it was 39-38 at half. So we were in a dogfight. And, you know, I was proud of the way we competed to the end. Uh, you know, we got to be able to hang our hats on that and never giving up and just, you know, digging in and playing together. In this game specifically, but also a bit in the season in general, I mean, you know your shooting numbers this year. How do you walk the line between I've got to take the shots that work within our offense and I need to get us a quote-unquote good look for that involves a bunch of ball movement, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I just play to win, bro, to be honest with you. And, you know, I don't really care about the numbers, as you can tell. Um, I just play to win. I compete, and wherever that ends me up, it'll end me up. And um, at the end of the year, my numbers will look similar to the, what the rest of my career has looked like so far. So I think I'm, you know, at 37 total, 32 from three. So I shot 37 from three last year and 40 from the field last year in an all-star year. So uh, my numbers will balance out at the end of the year. I just got to keep playing with confidence. Um, again, I think – trying to squeeze as much life out of this team as possible. Um, and the thought was to come back and try to play more winning championship caliber basketball. And, and you try to do that. And um, I haven't been able to find my, my touch in, you know, kind of a secondary third row um, as much. And when I'm aggressive, you know, I play well. So just got to keep trying to find ways to, to compete and, and bring value to the team. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's about wins and losses, and, and that's what keeps me up at night is, is the losses. It's not necessarily my individual play. As I said, it's very, very, very situational for all of us. When what do you, you make about, of, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Um, as a leader, your goal is to kind of get guys rallied and think about kind of others. But for yourself, after that shot, it kind of looked as though you were thinking about that a bit on the court. How do you pull yourself out of those moments to finish the games? I was tired as shit. I was just tired. That was that's what that was. I needed that one to go down. You know what I mean? Those shots give you more energy and more life and you know, just trying to pull out a, a win and squeeze out of there with, with you know, another possession or two and um came off of Grayson Allen in the corner and you know, there's a thousand plays that you want back. But um yeah, I'm never gonna stop, man. I, I compete to the end, I leave it all out there on the floor and um that's something that I've hung my hat on in this league and something that I'll continue to do and like it or love it. You know what I'm saying? I, I play my heart out, and, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. When teams are playing that kind of coverage against Scotty, sticking the center on him, playing the kind of one-man zone uh, to blockade the rim, do you feel like there's more that he can do or maybe you guys can do as a collective to get that big man moving a little bit and open things up? No, nah, we just got to take those shots, you know, and get more used to that type of offense. We haven't really played much pick and roll, um, you know, against a drop this year. So uh, it was a little funky there. And then the rhythm, again, just the air in the building, those shots weren't dropping. But you just got to take those shots. And they're, they're playing the percentages on defense, and we got to play the percentages on offense and come out and take the, take the, the, the threes and take the pull-ups um, and just be aggressive in that. I think that uh, a pick and roll, you know, will, will help our offense a lot and um, you know the more aggressive Scotty is on the second side the second action as you see late you know he turned it on late and, and scored a bunch so uh, he keep finding ways to be effective um, 
you know, as a, as a young kid playing the center against, you know, guys that are way bigger than him, it's going to be a little bit of a process. And um, I'm just, you know, he's, he's figuring it out. Given how little you've played against that type of defense, is it unrealistic to expect him to sort of figure it out from the jump on what to do on the second side? No, because he's a he's a talented player. He knows what to do. It's just you know he's he's one of those guys where it's one of those things where you don't want to feel like you're shooting because that's the shot they're giving you. So it's almost like I'm not gonna shoot it because you're making me shoot it. You know what I mean? And you try to do something else. But I think just finding the rhythm, he can find a little short roll floater as you saw late. You know, take up the space, get to the rim is um, maybe difficult to do a whole game. But um, you know, there's there's things that we can do and and playing the second side and and even instead of pop and, you know, just trail behind the play and, and play the role. Even against the deep drop, you still can play the role. So we got to continue to to work on that and, and try to find, you squeeze some, some things out of our offense there. But uh, defensively, you know, we were locked in tonight and, and we competed our asses off. Fred, Nick has said in previous games that the lack of shot making has impacted the defense negatively. Why do you think that didn't happen to him? We just fought. We just fought and um, we guarded him. We guarded them and they didn't shoot much better. You know, they threw a couple of threes in and, and um, very key moments. Uh, Giannis got to the line of what, uh, just 21 times. But um, we guarded and we, we were locked into the game plan and just, you know, really in sync on that end of the floor and competed and kind of made up for, for some of that. So you got to be able to give yourself a chance. And our, our defense gave us a chance to win tonight, um, but we just didn't make enough shots. A word that's already being used to describe this game is weird, just because the first three quarters was so intense, and then fourth quarter it slipped a little bit, and then you know you were a huge reason why it turned back around. How did you process like the fourth quarter and coming out so aggressively? Um, just had to find different ways to try to impact the game. I feel like most of the game I, I was just really trying to impact the game on the defensive end and being able to try to hold screens and set screens. Uh, but just really took a different approach on being aggressive, trying to get downhill, get to the basket. Um, not trying to be able to settle, but just trying to attack downhill and play into my strengths. And like, in a sense, even though you guys weren't able to pull out with the win, you guys did something that was pretty incredible, which was um, have a career high in turnovers for Giannis tonight. Um, how, are you guys were, how were you guys able to defend him as a team tonight? Um, just try to stay active, being gaps trying to make our hard frame to just be able to get to the paint and have those easy layups and dunks, uh, just try to take those away. Just try to make a hard frame every time you drive. And then finally, um, Pascal said that this game is uh, kind of a test for you guys. What's your biggest takeaway more so from this game and maybe what you saw from your teammates fighting back tonight? We played great defensively. Uh, I thought we played good defensively. It's kind of slow offense, but we just kept sticking with it throughout the whole game. We came back, uh, fought our way back, went to overtime, and it slipped away. And they got us. Uh, they got a win, but it was a good fight. We played great defensively. Now we just got to keep translating that every single game. Gary, have you ever been a part of a game that went down like that? Uh, not really, I know, but you know, we just got fighting us. We continue to go hard, continue to try to get the win, play hard, no matter what the score is, no matter the time is, and you know, that's the goal we go out there and set to try to do. It, I mean, to say that and then to actually do it when you guys are like down 16, a minute 15 left, like what's the conversation going on at that point? Uh, the same conversation we have every game, whether we're losing by 100 points or up by 100. Continue to go hard, continue to play to the last buzzer, pick up, you know, and try to get the win, you know, no matter what the game. It just so happened to be 16 and this time. What does that actually feel like in the moment? Like, so much adrenaline, you're getting hit below the belt, the, the crowd's going crazy for the first time. That must be just like an absolute blur. Uh, yeah, in a sense, you know, you really kind of block out all the noise, really try to focus in, lock in on the details of the game and, you know, what's going on in the moment. You really don't really hear too much of the outside noise, but, you know, it does help, you know, when the fans are into it and getting us going and being loud, you know, it helps us a lot. Nick was saying that the Bucks scheme more so than others, when you miss shots, like, you can start to feel the weight of it. Um, is that something that you felt, like, you know, when you guys start out 0 for 15, 2 for 30? 
I wouldn't really say that. You know, obviously the players they have on their team, you can't miss shots like that. The team they have, you got to knock down shots, you got to score, you got to defend. So, you know, that's obviously we got out to a slow start. You know, we got to be better on that. Gary, uh, your team's at home for the next little stretch here. Uh, do you feel like there's any, you know, benefits to having a, a strong home stand in a row uh, where you're able to, you know, not have to worry about travel and, and things like that? Uh, you could say that, you know, anytime you got a chance to play at home, you must defend it. You go out there and play hard. You know, this is your home. So go out there and get the dub. You know, it's a great stretch you said we're about to have. So let's go ahead and rack up some wins. What do you think about the defense you guys had in the first quarter? Obviously, you guys weren't scoring, but still kept it close. Um, you guys you felt like you guys missed your first 15 shots, but still were in the game. What do you think about your guys' defense? It was good, you know, just a testament to our, our team and who we are, the guys we have on the team, make or miss. Again, we're going to go out there, play hard, and try to defend. We can't let our not making shots uh, affect us on the defensive end or vice versa. So we just got to go ahead and go out there and play our games.